Why do priests wear vestments at mass? Different colors, different shapes. Looks kind of weird sometimes. Let's pour some coffee on that. Hey guys, this is Father Brad and you're watching Coffee Talk, where we drink coffee and talk about Jesus. So I had this encounter, this experience. I was at uh, St. Thomas Aquinas the other week and we had a, a penance service. It's where we get a bunch of priests to come and hear confessions. But at some point I had to go run and look for a remote control for the, the sound system or something like that. So I left in my alb, right, the long white thing, and I had a cincture on and and I went to the main office and the guys, there was these guys working on the air conditioner. And I walked in and I forgot I'm in an alb, right? I look kind of ridiculous outside of confession, outside of the mass, just wearing a wand. And I walked in and the guys were like, huh? This random dude just walks in in a long robe. Like, what is going on? You know, and I had a stole and everything. And it struck me and it, it was an experience where I was like, oh wow, this does look a little weird, out of context. Why do? I wear an alb. Why do we wear vestments when other denominations at their services can wear a suit or wear a graphic tee? First, priests aren't the only people who wear seemingly not normal attire in order to express who they are and in order to perform their duty. I think of other people like judges. Think of judges. I heard this example the other day. And even in some countries, especially like British countries, like Australia or England, like judges will wear wigs, um, which seems really weird to us. They'll wear gowns, right? Or their long, their long robes. G.K. Chesterton said, you know, the, the three groups of people that wore long robes or, or dresses were kings, priests, and judges. Um, and judges wear that, and it doesn't strike us as weird because... They're expressing who they are. Um, sometimes we wear weird stuff at birthday parties. Okay, think about this. You walk into someone's, you walk into a restaurant and someone's wearing a cone on their head. They're wearing a cone on their head. What the heck is that? It looks weird. It's not very fashionable. But what are they saying to everyone? It's my birthday and I'll cry if I want to cry. Give me the gifts. Give me the presents. I'm the birthday boy. Okay, how about this? All you weirdos out there wore a long robe and a stole and even a weird hat with a tassel when you graduated. If you graduated from high school, college, any of these play eighth grade graduations, we're always wearing these weird outfits that actually are connected to vestments. Why? Because there's a special event that we are celebrating and it sets us apart. These people that are graduating are not like the other people who are not graduating. And so when a priest wears a vestment, he's saying, I am a priest. I am no longer me, Father Brad. You know, I am Father Brad, but I'm representing, I'm in persona Christi Capitis. It's Christ, Jesus, who is the head of every mass. And I'm just his representative, so it sets me apart. Each of the vestments, the alb, the amice, which is the thing that goes around your neck, the, the cincture, which ties down the stole and the chasuble. We understand their symbolism when we read and understand the prayers that the priest says whenever he's putting them on. So I'm going to fill you in. Okay, first, so whenever the priest puts on the amice, um, if you've ever seen it, you might not have ever seen this, but it's like a big square rectangle thing that he throws around his neck and it covers up, his, if he, there's a gap in his alb, it covers up the the collar. It's called an amice. Originally it was kind of like a head thing. It was like a do-rag or something. But uh, it, it dropped down to the neck at some point in history. And so this is the prayer that the priest says. Lord, set the helmet of salvation on my head to fend off all the assaults of the devil. So that's the prayer that goes along with the amice. It's a, these go along with uh, Ephesians chapter 6, the, the prayers of the armor of God. And then next, the alb. Okay, the alb is the white long garment that the priest wears um, that goes all the way to the ground. Make me white, O Lord, and cleanse my heart, that being made white in the blood of the Lamb, I may des deserve an eternal reward. The alb goes back to the book of Revelation where it says the saints, those who are purified, those who are before God's presence, are wearing the pure white 
out. It also goes back to our baptisms. Whenever we receive a white garment, these are all connected. Even the wedding, the wedding dress is connected to these realities of baptism and, and the book of Revelation, being the bride of Christ who's ushered before the Lamb. So the blood of a Lamb washes us clean, and that's what the owl represents. Next, the cincture, or the rope that makes the owl look not like a muumuu. Gird me, O Lord, with the cincture of purity, and quench in my heart the fire of concupiscence, that the virtue of continence and chastity may abide in me. If, uh, if you're in a Roman church, and you're praying these prayers, and you're a priest, you took a vow of celibacy, um, which means uh, we're all called to chastity in some way, but for us, it's a particular vow. And we are praying every Mass we celebrate to uphold those vows. And, the, and the, literally, the rope is like a, a purity rope or a chastity rope. It's like tying us down and, and, and making sure through our words and through the symbols that we remember that vow, just like Christ took to not be married to one person here, but to give our life for the church universal as the bride of Christ. The stole. The stole is that, that uh, garment that goes over each side, and there's like one hanging right here and one hanging right here. This is what we said. Uh, this is what we say. Lord, restore the stole of immortality, which I lost through the collusion of our first parents, and unworthy as I am to approach thy sacred mysteries, may I yet gain eternal joy. Okay, so the stole represents the original holiness and original immortality of our first parents. Remember, death did not enter from the beginning. It came after the sin, at least for human beings. And so we are praying that we're looking to the future where we have immortality once again. And that stole, um, it represents that. It also represents the, the two powers of the priest to consecrate the Eucharist and to forgive sins, like one hanging on this side, one hanging on that side. And actually, we tie the cincture around the stole. So the stole is tied down because it's not ours. It's not our authority. Um, it's the church. Christ gave us through the church that authority. So it's not ours to wield willy-nilly how we will. We're bound to do things with the mind of the church. And last, the chasuble, which represents, let's see what it represents with the prayer. O Lord, who have said, my yoke is sweet and my burden light, grant that I might so carry it as to merit thy grace. So it's the burden, the yoke of Christ. It's a responsibility. Like whenever a chasuble, that, that poncho looking thing, comes down upon the priest's shoulders, he's praying about taking up the responsibility, not just of that mass, but of all the ministry of Christ. And Jesus asks us to take up the yoke with him. And even though it's, it's light um, and, and not impossible, there's still a responsibility that comes with every one of our vocations and with the priest, an extra one as well. To, to be like Christ. I think of particularly that before Mass and after Mass and that, that burden of hearing sins, right? Of, of, of hearing everyone's deepest, darkest secrets being plunged into the the depravity of sin constantly. It is a burden. It's a burden like Christ carried on the cross. And every priest has to deal with that. And that's why we pray these, to attach ourselves to Jesus. And that's why these uh, garments should symbolize. And now you know what they mean um, whenever you see them at Mass. This is a human thing. You know, to wear vestments to symbolize something. We do this all the time, different colors. Think of 4th of July, we're wearing red, white, and blue. Uh, October, we're wearing orange and black. Uh, December, what you wearing? You're wearing green and red when it's Christmas time because it means something. It connects us as a community to something bigger than ourselves. If, have you ever seen a, a like a blackout game or a whiteout game or a redout game? Like if the, if your team's colors are red and white, everyone instead don't even wear white, just wear red. In the entire uh, stadium, the entire field is a big blob of red. They're one community. That's kind of like the symbolism in the colors of the seasons and the church. That when a priest puts on his vestments, this priest puts on vestments, that priest puts on vestments. They were all the same color throughout the whole world. In the stadium of the world, the Christian church is wearing one color, one team, one heartbeat. Go Tigers. That was a Coach Joe reference. But one heartbeat, one church. And so vestments take away almost 
the individuality of the priest. Because I'm it's not about me. You get what I'm saying? That it connects us to something bigger than ourselves and even bigger than the world right now. It connects us to all of history that have gone back, that have laid down these traditions and these vestments. And it's gonna connect us to the future. Whenever priests that aren't even born yet, that, that will be ordained and I'll be some old fart priest and they're gonna, guess what? They're gonna be wearing the vestments of the church. It will be connected in a way. There's, there's no generational gaps or there's less generational gaps. We're one holy Catholic and apostolic church with, with a symbolism that expresses our connection as a body of Christ.